welcome to Jesus is Lord. We encourage you to stand on God's word through all circumstances. Remember, things only work together for our good when we fellowship with Jesus daily. Good afternoon. This is Brother Quincy Gardner on Jesus is Lord to provide you with some things that God wants to say to you and touch your heart to minister to you today and for God to move in your lives because we believe in that God is real and that God wants to speak to every one of you who are listening to us today. Hallelujah. Today, our program, in our program, I'm going to be interviewing Brother Josh Smothers. He's the uh, uh, youth pastor here at First Pentecostal Holiness Church in Greenville, North Carolina. A wonderful church to go to for those of you who are listening and don't have a church to go to, just would like to visit from time to time other churches. This will be a great place to visit. I visit here and I've enjoyed my visits and they are a good, sound, doctrinal church. Amen. Brother Josh, it's wonderful to have you here Thank with you. me today. Thank you. And I'm going to ask you a few questions about yourself. What led you to the Lord? How did you, what's your testimony about being saved? Give us that first of all. Yeah, so uh, I was raised in church. Mm -hmm. My mom was a children's minister. Mm -hmm. And every time the doors were open, I was drugged to church. Didn't matter if it was a Monday night, we were drugged to church. And uh, we were always there, but I never made it a personal relationship. It was just always something I, I just did because that's what mom and you know dad had me do. And I was there. And, uh, eventually I got rebellious and was like I don't want to go anymore and I was hanging out with the wrong crowd and I found myself in a crisis moment where I realized that my life was not lining up with what I knew to be true. Let me ask you something. Now are you the only child? I am not. I have a okay. sister and I have a um, <clears throat> excuse me a best friend who's like a brother. Okay. Um, that's okay. a whole story and testimony in itself. Okay. Um, but they, the two of them, they did a lot better than I did. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I found myself at about 14 in this crisis moment where I realized the path I was on. That's kind of early, 14. Really? Mm -hmm. I was at 14. A crisis at age 14? Wow, uh, let was, me hear about that. I had a friend who was involved in uh, some legal troubles, and I realized mm -hmm. that I could very quickly myself wind up in that same situation as a hooligan as a hooligan <laughs> and uh, I realized and I didn't I hadn't done nothing but uh -huh. I was in that crowd and I realized mm -hmm. that's the path that I'm headed yes and I and I remember being mm -hmm. in my bedroom I said Lord I said if 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 you're there mm -hmm. and you'll forgive me mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn it over to you I'll give you everything from here forward and it took some years for me to you know clean everything up but I, I knew that night that I gave myself to the Lord I told him I said I want you to be my Lord and I want you to be my Savior I'd heard that prayer so many times, but that night I made it personal. And it was several years later that I found myself in a youth camp. And I was wondering what the Lord had for me. I had been serving in a midweek Royal Rangers program at the church I was attending at the time. Mm -hmm. This lady had come down the stairs and uh, I was sitting in the cafe of the church and she didn't know me from, from Adam. And she said, you, I said, Yes, ma'am. She said, I have 16, 16 kindergarten and first grade boys upstairs in this classroom and I'm by myself and I need help. Will you help me? Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I said, I'm, I'm like 15, 16 years old. I can't be up there teaching a class. But then my heart was like, well, hold on. You were raised in kids ministry. Yeah. You could help out for the night. So I helped her out for the night and that turned into five years of me helping out in that class. And uh, during that time, I started going, Lord, you, you're gifting me in this. You're opening doors for me in this. I enjoy working for you. And I started going, have you called me to ministry? And then I looked at other pastors and I said, no, 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 no. I, I don't, I don't want to be a pastor, Lord. You know, that's, that's, that's hard, you know. Um, at, at what age were you at that time? 16. 16, okay. 16. Oh, good, good, so good. So 16, and I started saying, Lord, there's there's no way you've called me. Um, I, I don't like to speak in front of people, mm -hmm. believe it or not. At the mm -hmm. time, I didn't like to speak in front of people. And uh, I said, there's no, there's no way. Well, I went to this church camp, and the mm -hmm. pastor at the time was speaking. His sermon wasn't even geared towards accepting a call. Brother Quincy, and I remember he stopped the sermon on a, on a Thursday night, just stopped it. Talk about the Lord giving a word of wisdom. And he points off to a dark room, 
he points off in my general direction. He said, there's a young man in here who's 16 serving in a midweek program for now, boys. Now, you said that he pointed you out and said that there was a young man who was 16. What's, 16. what's up with that? Well, I, well, see, that was that was my thing. I was like, okay, there's a lot of young men here who are 16, but you're pointing in my general direction. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking around, and I'm going, how many of y'all could be serving in a midweek boys program? Because he said that, and he oh. said, and you're asking yourself if you're called, and I'm telling you the Lord's saying you're called. Now, God... God spoke that word through that man. He did. Pointing you out. He did. And that touched your heart. And you recognized that as the voice of God speaking to you. I did. You mean God can speak to us today. Is he that can. what you're saying? I am. I am. Um, so what did you do? Did you did you did you continue being rebellious or what? Oh no, well and at that time and at that time I had been really working to turn it around because I knew, you know, I can't live that way and I'd give my life to the Lord so He's been sanct he was sanctifying me, and he still is. Uh, and uh, but I, I sat there and I said, "Lord, there is no way I can deny you anymore." And I said, "So if, if you're going to use this man to call me, I'll accept it. Yes. You tell me where to go. I don't care if it's the far west or if it's the far east or if you want me to stay home. Mm -hmm. I, I'll go where you, you send me." And he started opening doors for me to work with other ministers at a young age. I came home from that uh, church camp. And I immediately connected with my pastor at the time. Now, did your parents see any difference in you and when you came home from that youth camp? They, they did. They what, did indeed. What, what, what was their words? <laughs> their words? Probably uh, less chastisement. You know, they didn't have to get on to me as much. Of course, I was still a, a ornery 16-year-old, you know, but uh, my, my tone changed. You know, I started talking about the kingdom and, and yeah. not, you know... Uh, Things that are popular in, in culture in that time, and uh, my my dialogue changed, my friend circle changed, and uh, everything changed. You know, and that that's what happens when you encounter the Lord. If you really encounter Him, everything changes. Just hearing your testimony <clears throat> brings tears to my eyes. It really does because recognizing how God can touch lives and speak to a person who has a hunger towards Him, mm -hmm. and then place His foot in the direction that He wants Him to go. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, then what happened? Uh, I, I finished high school. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually homeschooled. My mom was an educator and my yes. dad was military and we were moving around. So mm -hmm. when we were young, she said, I, I'm going to homeschool you because I can do this myself. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> the Lord blessed her with that. That was a task. Was it? And Oh, that was a task. <laughs> and um, I, the, the Lord had his hand on her teaching me. But... I, I finished high school and I thought I was going to go to Lee University mm -hmm. with the Church of God out in Cleveland, Tennessee. I took all the tests, all the scores, everything, mm -hmm. and I was ready to go. But I was always having these hang-ups and admissions, just stuff that shouldn't happen. It's like all these scores what add up. What does that mean, hang-up? They kept saying, oh, well, you need to run this or you need to, to do this. And I'm like, I've sent you this. And like, okay. well, we can't find okay. it. And so I'd send it again. Oh, well, we can't find it. Oh. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I had a friend who said, have you heard of Heritage Bible College? Uh -huh. And that was in town. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I said, no, I've not heard of Heritage. So I began to look at Heritage Bible College. It was a smaller Bible college, mm -hmm. but the community of believers that were there were so strong in the faith that I don't think I could have made the relationships that I made there. Give me a perspective. Uh, where is Heritage? Heritage is in Dunn, North Carolina. Oh, okay. At the time, it was off of Exit 72 on I-95, if I'm correct. I think it's Exit 72. Is that your hometown or area? That's where I lived for the last many years before I moved to Greenville. That was the last place my dad was stationed. Uh, he okay. was on Fort Bragg. Okay. And so he would go to Fayetteville, but we lived in Dunn, so we didn't have to live in the craziness of Fayetteville. And, um, but no, so I... I put in my application, and just from the moment of putting in my application, I, I knew. Mm -hmm. There was no shadow of a doubt. I said, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. Mm. And, uh, and then on top of that, I was doing my uh, devotion one day, and I was praying to the Lord. I was like, Lord, I had been accepted to, this, to the school. Mm -hmm. I was getting ready to start classes, and I said, Lord, I'm asking that you bless my, my classes. Let me get as much of this as I possibly can so I can glorify you, and I can use this to preach your gospel. And I heard him say, I want you to do this fast. What does that mean, do it fast? What that well, mean? that's what I said. I said, well, Lord, what do, you, what do you mean do it fast? 
and this is a four-year program. He said, I want you to do this in three. Wow. And I said, I was like, oh, oh, okay. I'll, three, three years, this, that means I'm going to be taking 20 plus credits a semester in summer classes. And Lord, this, I'm going to be crammed. And he said, I got you. And I just, I knew it in my heart. And I said, okay. And so I went to my dean and I told him, I said, the Lord's laid on my heart that I need to do this faster. And I need to up my classes. And he said, if you get below a B, I won't let you take over 15 credits. And I said, yes, sir. And I only got two Bs in my entire time that I was there. And um, Does that mean you got the rest of them Cs? The rest, <laughs> the rest of them were As. I got to graduate summa cum laude. Oh, um, man. That was a big blessing. I didn't expect that. Uh -huh. And um, I, I just loved my, my time there. I was working at Gospel Tabernacle at the time as well in their daycare and summer camp program. Yes. And their children's pastor, his name is Alan Thomas. He's a dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He got me the job, and I loved that job. I worked there for three years while I was in school. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, me and his daughter began to have a relationship. We dated for many years. And then when we broke up, which is what happens, oh, yeah. we yeah. broke up. I was devastated. Interesting enough, I was time to graduate. And I was like, well, Lord, where do I go next? What do I do? And he opened a door for me to work at a local gym in town, which was Planet Fitness, which is a massive franchise. Okay. Within eight months from being hired, I found myself the manager of the location here in Greenville, North Carolina. Oh. So I started as part-time staff at Planet Fitness in Dunn, uh -huh. where I got to talk to so many people and I got to share the gospel to people because I was determined. I said, if you're going to come in here and I'm going to see you every day, I'm going to be the light in your life. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the love of Jesus because you have no idea what people are coming in with. You now, have no idea. What was some of the most outstanding or, or in your mind uh, experience when you led people to the Lord? Give me a couple of yeah, those. So I, I had a lady um, come in when I was working at the Planet Fitness and done. You could just see it on her face. Something was wrong. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and I said, ma'am, I, I said, I, you know, it's really none of my businesses, but is, it, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, you know, my, my son, he's addicted to drugs. He's got, you know, this problem, this problem, this problem. And I can't remember all the problems. Mm -hmm. But I remember her saying, you know, and I'm, I'm questioning my own faith. I've been a believer for years, but I'm asking, what, God, why would you let this happen to my family? I've raised my son in the church. And I thought of myself. Mm -hmm. I thought, man, this is probably how my mom felt. You know, and I wasn't, you know, hooked on drugs or anything. I was just being a fool. <laughs> and... Um, I, I said, ma'am, would you mind if I, if I prayed with you? Mm -hmm. And she said, absolutely. And we prayed there and I prayed. I spoke over her life. I said, I'm, I'm believing that the Lord is going to bring back your son. Mm -hmm. um, I told her, I said, I'm believing he's going to give you a peace and that he's going to answer your questions. And uh, I never heard anything about her son afterward, but I know that from that day forward, she came in just radiant, smile. You could tell that, that the Lord had spoken to her in that time. I don't know what he told her, mm -hmm. but every time I saw her, you could see that God's hand was upon her and that she had a peace. You and know, she, that's interesting. <clears throat> uh, and a lot of times we miss the indication that God gives us concerning the outcome, the future outcome of, of a situation. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember the story with uh, Pharaoh after he had the dream and Joseph, he got uh -huh. Joseph in. And Joseph, one of the words that Joseph said to Pharaoh was, God shall give you a sign of peace yes. concerning this interpretation. And that's what God gave to this lady. You, mm -hmm. That's what you spoke to her, mm -hmm. that God would give her a peace mm -hmm. about that situation. And you saw that manifest on her the next times that you saw her, didn't mm -hmm. you? I did. It was, uh, honestly, it was incredible. It was one of the first yeah. times that I had seen something like that happen mm -hmm. since I accepted the call. And so for me, it was just a huge boost in my spirit. I was like, yes, God, you know, I am, I'm, I'm doing the right things. You've, you've, mm -hmm. you've called and you've ordered my steps. And um, I had some other instances like that when I worked at this Planet Fitness here in Greenville, except it wasn't with members, it was with my staff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here in Greenville, it's a college town. Yes, it and is. so I employed a lot of college students. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd hear about weekend parties and things like that and I had a employee who um, had an ab abortion in her time that I was the manager and she came to me crying she was so conflicted 
and I remember stopping talking with I won't say her name, but I remember stopping and talking with her and, and saying, you know, you realize that you know God has called you mm -hmm. to a lot more. God has called you. He, he you are His daughter. You know, He He values you, and mm -hmm. these people that you're hanging with don't value you. Yes. The same way that He does. He sees you, and you don't feel seen, which is why you're doing some of these things. Mm -hmm. But He sees you. And I never got her to come to church. I haven't got her to accept the call, but I did notice an attitude change. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, and when I've seen her, I've seen her in public a couple times just mm -hmm. since I've left that job. And she's even brought it up. She's like, you know, you you really spoke to me that day and you, you realized, you helped me realize my value. Yes. That my value isn't found in these guys and in these yes. parties and stuff. And I think she still slips from time to time, but man... I think God understands the long road, mm -hmm. and I do believe that one day that she's going to come back full circle, and that the Lord's really going to get hold of her. Just planting that seed, and I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to water it. Yes, Amen. You know, um, I'm sure there are many people in the audience uh, who are going through the same types of experience that this young lady just spoke mm -hmm. about is going through, and. God can speak to you. Absolutely. Josh, give them a word. Give them a word right quick. And then we'll go back to your testimony. Yeah. Uh, you know, someone in a situation like that. I, I think of I think of the prodigal. And I know that's pretty cliche for many people. But I think of the prodigal. You know, he said, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to go out and I'm going to live how I want to live. And I'm just going to go for it. And he found himself in this pit. You know, he found himself with these pigs. Which as a Hebrew, he wasn't supposed to be with pigs. And he said, you know, I would rather eat what the pigs eat, which in and of itself didn't match the kosher laws of the Hebrew people. Yeah. And so he found himself as low as he could probably get. And then he said to himself, he said, you know, my father's servants have plenty of food to eat. So here's what I'll do. I'll go and apologize to my father. I'm going to tell him, God, a father, I've sinned against you and God, please hire me as a hand. Yes. And so he goes back to the father. And you know what's interesting? The father didn't even let him apologize. Yeah. In the text, in Luke 15, he goes back to the Father. Mm. And Amen. the moment he goes, Father, I've, the text doesn't show that he didn't get to apologize. The Father runs to him, which as a Hebrew was shameful. He's not supposed to yes. run. And the way that's supposed to play out in Hebrew culture is the elders of the tower want to take a clay pot and meet the son at the gate and break the pot and say, this was our bond and it's been broken and you're no longer welcome. Mm -hmm. So the Father risks shame to beat the elders mm -hmm. before they could cast their judgment on him. Mm -hmm. To wrap his arms around him and say, no, you're mine, and I love you. Get a ring, get a coat, slaughter the fattened calf. And so my word for somebody watching today is, mm -hmm. you might be like the prodigal. Maybe you've not told your parents, you know, forget you, I'm going to live how I want. But you find yourself in this pit where you never thought you would see yourself. You find yourself in this situation. But God is willing to run after you, yes. to exalt you, to give you a robe and a ring, to throw you a feast. And he's thankful that you've come home. He doesn't need this long, extravagant apology. He just needs you to come home. My, my, my. That shows that God's love is not a performance-based love. It's not. God loves you, those of you who are listening. God's arms are open to receive you again. Mm -hmm. The words that Josh spoke indicates God's love towards you. So if you're in that situation as Josh described, God is open and he, he's right there waiting for you to turn again to him. Amen. And he won't hold your past against you. Now, I might hold your past against <laughs> you, but not God. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Josh, mm -hmm. continue on. Okay. You mm -hmm. are presently the uh, youth pastor here at First Pentecostal Holiness Church. Mm -hmm. let's, get, let's talk a little about that right quick, yeah. and then we'll go back. Yeah. So, um... Interestingly, I left the job at Planet Fitness uh -huh. in March of 2020. Okay. I left on Friday the 13th, telling my staff, don't worry about it. Hey, aren't you superstitious? No, no, but I did find this interesting. I left on a Friday the 13th in March, Tuesday the 16th, if my dates are correct. Mm -hmm. Governor Cooper shut the state down because of the coronavirus and Planet mm -hmm. Fitness closed its doors. Monday oh, the 15th, I started here at the church. Mm -hmm. Glory. I no. never missed a day of work. My financial provisions were always taken care of. Mm -hmm. God carried me from that opportunity to this opportunity. And I've served here 
since March 15th, if my dates are correct, yes. um, of 2020 till today. You know, that's wonderful. You know, a lot of, you know, there are still a lot of saints who are somewhat superstitious mm -hmm. and think this, so won't let a black cat cross in front of you yeah. and all this type of stuff and want to do some type of mark or something to yeah. remove the bad luck. Well, in God, we don't have to worry about bad luck Amen. or superstition. No. Do we? No, we don't. My, my, my. God has provided you in your walk. Mm -hmm. Now, how old are you now? I am 25. I'll be 26 25. in April. Wow. <clears throat> yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And it was at my time, it's in my time of employment here that I met my now wife. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Jamin. We got married in September of 21. Mm -hmm. um, We've been married a little over a year now, and things are going great. Um, I've not been threatened with violence or anything, so the Lord's hand must be must be at work. Oh um, man! But things are going good with our youth ministry. Um, mm -hmm. I, I when I started, there was only a couple students, so a couple students, only a couple students. Mm -hmm. But we're up to sixteen if everybody comes. So uh -huh. uh, the Lord's hands at work, and they're on fire, and that's what's great. Glory, glory, glory! Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Now. Being here, uh, have you seen? I, I, I remember you going on some trips uh, with mm -hmm. the with the youth mm -hmm. and things this sort. What what was that like with some of the some of the youth around here in this? Oh area? man, <clears throat> it's probably the highlight of my year when we get to do those events. Um, the first time I took them on a trip, mm -hmm. we were supposed to go to Tennessee, and our conference we were supposed to do got canceled because of all the COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up going anyway, but we had a cabin to ourselves, and we just had our own conference. Really? And it was it was incredible. The cabin was already booked. Uh -huh. I didn't want these kids to be any more disappointed than they already had been. They had already been through enough. School was closed. Proms were canceled. And I was like, well, you know what? The Lord's made a way for us to have this cabin. Uh -huh. Everybody was in good health. I was like, you know, if you if you if you're coughing, you don't feel good. Yeah. You know, let's 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 revisit you coming. Yeah. But everybody checked out. There was no ill health. And uh, we went, and I had a student who um, had been in some issues with the law. He had had a okay. DUI, actually. Okay. And while he was there, um, the Lord got hold of him. And I, you could just watch those chains just breaking off of him, this bondage and the things that he was dealing with. It was really incredible. And we laid hands on him and prayed over him. And he's in school now at UNC Greensboro, and I've kept up with him from time to time. And I've asked him, how's... How's things going? He's like, man, I'm not, I'm not slipping. Yes. I'm, I'm holding to. He's like, I remember when we called the trip redirect. Mm -hmm. He's like, I remember that night at redirect. He's like, and I'm, I'm not going back. Yes. This past year, we went to that youth conference finally. It's called Shabak, uh -huh. and uh, man, it was an incredible experience. Our students got to watch other students set free of demonic possession. Really? There were three recorded. <clears throat> excuse me instances in that conference of students being set free from demonic possession. Wow. And yes. I have one student that, and it's, it's, it's a, thousands right. of students. You have to explain that so, yes. that, so that we all so, can get an so understanding of what somebody, that means. Somebody who a demon has taken control of them. This isn't where it's an oppression where it's just kind of mm -hmm. guiding some steps. In which, this, is, this is a person who is being influenced fully by demonic forces. And if you're in the room for that, Mm -hmm. and you're spiritually in tune, you already know before it yes, happens. Yes. Because when we walked into that conference, I felt this weight on my chest. I said, mm -hmm. something is evil. Yes. This is not right. This is not of God. And it won't long before you start hearing the screaming and the wailing. Mm -hmm. And you say, humans don't make that noise. Now, some people don't believe that people can be de demonically mm -hmm. possessed uh -huh. in this age, in this time. But we see that in the Bible. We do. And you mean that's true? And that can a person can be delivered of that? I do. They can be. We watched three of them delivered that night. Wow. And Glory we God. had a student that was probably 15 feet from one of them, and uh -huh. it wrecked his perspective. What do you mean by that? Wrecked his it perspective. changed everything. He thought things were one way. He thought, uh -huh. oh, this doesn't happen today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now he's realizing there are demonic forces at work. Yes. All around, we don't war against flesh and blood. Yes, and he realized that, and it has changed his perspective. And I've watched that with him in the last year. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! So good things are happening mm -hmm. with the youth, yes, and, sir, at, at the camp and, and just in church as well. Mm -hmm. Now, tell the audience a, a little bit about your youth camp because there may be some parents out there who has 
uh, some kids mm -hmm. that are unruly and mm -hmm. in all sorts of mm -hmm. ways rebellion, rebellious. Mm -hmm. Give them, give them some hope. Yeah. So about this church and about what they can, what can happen should they send it to you. Yeah, camp. yeah. So we have youth every Sunday night unless there's a major holiday and we give them off at that time. But the doors open at five for hangout. We hang out for an hour. Mm -hmm. That way we can just fellowship and talk. Mm -hmm. Hang out. What's going on with you? Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to talk, we got video games they can play. Mm -hmm. We've got a pool table and air hockey and stuff. Just to hang out, we normally have snacks. Mm -hmm. Six o'clock service starts. We have full church service. We have a praise team that my my wife leads because okay. she's musically talented. What day is it? That's on Sunday nights. Okay. At six o'clock service starts. We have altar time. We have worship. I bring a word. We don't just normally do a little devotion. Uh -huh. We have a full sermon. Uh -huh. um, I've even allowed other students to preach as well if they've expressed now, the call to ministry. This is at first. This is here at Greenville First PH. First mm -hmm. Pentecostal holding this mm -hmm. church on what street? Two hundred four Brinkley, Greenville North. Two hundred four Brinkley. Mm -hmm. And pair pickups at seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this February we're going to be going to mm -hmm. Shabak. So mm -hmm. um, next year we'll be going again. So I'd love to carry more students. Now, explain with us. what Shabak is so they can understand. What Shabak the is word. a mm -hmm. youth. You know what? I can't recall the Hebrew word off the top of my head. I'm going to okay. be honest with you. Um, I, okay, continue. But I do know that it's in February or March most years. Okay. depends on when they can book the conference center in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Mm. And it is a trip and a conference geared solely for high school and middle school students. And it gives them the opportunity where they can really encounter God on a personal level. It's an incredible experience. Yes. Life-changing. Yes. We've even had leaders come back with a renewed spirit. So it's not just geared for, for students, it's geared for adults. Anybody's welcome. Yes, hallelujah. That is a wonderful thing to have a child changed by going to a youth camp. And I want to make sure that those of you who are listening be aware of the opportunities here for deliverance for your children Amen. and hope for your children, hope for your family. Uh, our time is just about up for now, so... This is again, Jesus is Lord, and He is, can be Lord in your life and bring hope to you, those of you who are not saved. Amen. It doesn't take much to get saved, does it, John? No, it doesn't. Just call on the name of the Lord. That's right. In repentance. That's right. Hallelujah. Again, we had Josh Smothers with, with us today. Until next week at the same time, this is Brother Ken Jones asking you, is Jesus your Lord? River and the river is moving in me. Uh -huh. Out of myself.